Do these new diets ever bug the crap out of you? I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm slightly nauseated every time I go into the health and wellness section of the bookstore, because every time I go in, it's the same exact thing. A new revolutionary diet book, usually written by some new no-name MD, that's the 48-week shred, and it's just a really an encapsulation of everything else that's come before it, with some new spin-off. And to me, honestly, it's not really surprising that one of the most common emails I get of the tens of thousands I've answered is, I don't really know who to trust anymore, Alex, because I've seen so much crap that's supposedly different from the next thing, but it really is the exact same package differently. And I don't really know who to trust anymore. And then I hear the inevitable, you know what? I give up. I'm just going to eat what I like, enjoy my life, not stress about this crap, and just take it easy. So in today's video, I'm going to show you some research about how your diet really doesn't matter with a caveat, asterisk on top of that, and what really does if you want to see results long term. Hey, what's up? It is Alex over at modernhealthmonk.com. So I want you to listen to this study done in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So in this study, in 2005, they wanted to see the adherence rates and the effectiveness of four popular diets. The Atkins diet, the Zone diet, Weight Watchers, and the Ornish diet, okay? So the Atkins diet is really carb reduction. The Zone diet is a macronutrient balance. Weight Watchers is really calorie restriction and Ornish is fat restriction. So after one year, they wanted to see the weight loss across the groups. So here's what it looked like after 12 months. Atkins, 3.9 pounds. Again, this is a year. Zone diet, 4.9 pounds. Weight Watchers, 4.6 pounds. And Ornish, 6.6 .6 pounds. So really the difference between the worst and the best, 3.9 pounds in Atkins versus 6.6 .6 pounds in Ornish, is to me nothing. For a year of work and effort, what is that, like three pounds difference? Is that, you tell me, is that really worth a year of working? Personally, I say no. But what the researchers concluded was the direct, the only thing related to results, this is the most fascinating part, listen to this. So each of the popular diets modestly reduced body weight and several cardiac risk factors. However, increased adherence was associated with greater weight loss and cardiac risk factor reduction for each diet group. So more than the actual diet itself, the biggest predictor of whether they saw results was whether they did the plan. And that may seem pretty logical, but when we get messed up, the first question is often, all right, what plan do I follow? What I'm suggesting here is that may be the least important question. And the best question is, how do I get myself to follow a simple plan consistently over time? So now you know why everything I talk about always comes down to habits. Every freaking video says your tiny habit for today. There's a reason for that. And it's because if we don't follow habits and behavioral change, nothing really works. It doesn't matter if I gave you the perfect plan. Like if I gave you the perfect plan right now, I said, you do this, this, and this. I've had students lose over a hundred pounds doing that. Could you do it? Could you still do it every single day for a year? Probably not. That's because we're human. <laughs> but the real secret sauce is in the strategy, the day-to-day, -day, master the day strategy, hence the title of my book, for making that a reality. That's, that's where the magic happens, not in the diet. So in this video here, I want to encourage a totally fundamental mindset shift. If you get derailed and things aren't going well, rather than thinking, okay, I tried that cleanse, tried the detox, zone, Atkins, Ornish, blah, 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 don't ask yourself the same question. The question you might've been asking was what plan do I follow? The question now to ask is how do I follow the plan? How do I create a plan that helps me follow the plan? In other words, what's my system for cultivating and continually doing healthy habits? And that's really the million dollar question. For example, one of the habits I talked about here was doing a morning routine where you do visualizations, you do a quick light stretching regime, you write down the goals for that day, for that week of your health, or you could do the golden trifecta technique I talk about. One nutritional habit, one exercise habit, one accountability habit, or you could pick one simple habit and just increase it by one minute per day. Whether it's meditation, whether it's walking, whether it's weightlifting, whether it's yoga, whether it's sleeping more or waking up earlier, just increase it by one minute per day or decrease it by one minute of day, whatever you're going for. So today's tiny habit is really quite simple. Just like this Journal of the American Medical Association study found, it's not necessarily how good the plan is, especially for health. It's really whether or not we can stay consistent. And that sounds like something you probably already know, but does your approach reflect that? So today, when you're showing up, are you thinking about how can I do this a year from now rather than how can I do this 
three weeks from now for the beach season? Maybe not. I don't know. You have to think about that. Only you can answer that. Your tiny hack for today is to start thinking about your system for consistency. Maybe that means doing less. Maybe that means picking only three habits and only doing those, removing all the extraneous stuff that's causing overwhelm, that's causing stress, that's causing you to skip the gym because it's too long and you don't like it. Maybe it means doing more stuff you like. But start thinking about your system for staying accountable day to day and really the system for doing the system. So it's kind of an interesting study and uh, interesting thought for today. If you're on YouTube, make sure you go on over to modernhealthmonk.com. I've got a real food habits weight loss guide for you there. Also, make sure you subscribe because, again, you're going to get the next video in the series. And, again, make sure you go on over to the site. That's really where all the good stuff is. All my ultimate guides are there, and there's a ton of content there you could uh, spend a lifetime browsing. Leave a comment below as well. I want you to tell me what's been the biggest struggle for you in regard to staying accountable, staying focused. In other words, sticking to the plan. What's been the toughest part? Thanks for joining me here. Take care, and I'll see you next time.